How much has our concept, understanding of love changed in the past, I don't know, centuries, let's just say, right? And I say this because um, everybody seemed to have an opinion about the word love and uh, they seem to claim to have the absolute true understanding of love without the sense of caring about how about others how about what do others think about love yet all this craziness chaos about around this word seem to be spoken around as if you know it's what unites us most and I don't think that's the case currently in our society. Um, most of you maybe have played a game um, called telephone. I had to ask some of our church uh, staff and say, hey, you've played that game, do you remember how it goes? And yeah, I was told it's, it's true, it's called telephone. That's when a, a group of people sit in a circle and one person who initiates the game will think of a word or a phrase and will quietly whisper in the, the ear of the next person. And then he'll continue just whispering, whispering, whispering until he'll come back and the last person will say what the word or the phrase is and the first person has to reveal so they'll see how distorted, right? The word or the phrase got just because it was going from ear to ear and now being whispered. I do feel like that's what happened with the word love, that we whispered it from generation to generation, from a culture to culture, and we've come so far that we don't even know what, what is really love about. Here's what I'm happy about today, that the Bible tells us what love is. And the Bible tells us what good and God kind of love is. But until we go to the scripture, here are some wrong uh, misconceptions about the word love. Love simply means love, right? No limits. It's, it's the world, the universe. It's, it's out of boundaries. Love simply means love. Or love means accepting and approving everything, right? We're loving people, so of course you're right. Of course everything is right. Everything is the way it's supposed to be, so it's right. Or that love simply makes everything right, right? As long as it's done with love, I don't care what you did, is perfect, is right. Well, that's the problem. I think love means opportunity. Love means opportunity does not mean approving, promoting what is wrong, but promotes the opportunity, gives the chance to make it right. Love means putting the person beyond the wrong and helping that person to make it right. That's love to me, what I understand from the scriptures. There's a church. Uh, this church in, is in Philippi. And uh, the Apostle Paul genuinely loved this church. And he has an entire epistle that we know that is addressed to the church in Philippi. In the book of Acts, um, chapter 16, is when Paul comes across um, a, a woman. Her name is Lydia. And, and uh, Paul shares the gospel. She accepts Christ. And her entire family gets baptized. And a church is planted in their house. And this family are leading this church. And this church seems to have love as the driving force in the family, in the church. And Paul has this um, jealousy, this zeal to keep that love genuine and, and original to the love of Christ. And you see that all across this epistle. I just want to read for you Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. And hear, hear this. And this I pray, says Paul, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ to the glory 
and praise of God. Of so many words, there's so much theology in this to, to just explore and it's very relevant to every one of us today. But here's what I want you to realize that love is not a feeling that stays a feeling, but he seems to break it down and say how this is supposed to be. What's the formula of a good and God kind of love? It starts with this, that love is supposed to abound more and more in knowledge. Knowledge, wisdom, solid, proven knowledge. And from knowledge will come discernment. You understand? Without knowledge, you cannot discern, you cannot separate, you cannot filter right from wrong. So you need knowledge. From knowledge, you will you will get, you will it'll come discernment. And it says, from discernment, you will know what and who to approve and what and who to disapprove. Without knowledge, Without discernment, you don't have the wisdom to write to approve, approve or disapprove. So, knowledge, discernment, then approving or disapproving. And in this constant practice, says, is where excellence will come out. The perfect knowledge uh, of love will come out. The excellence, when there is knowledge, discernment, then approval. So what's left, what's filtered out, then is excellent. This is the good kind of love. This is the God kind of love. Now, when this type of love is the good, is the God sent one, God meant one, created one, then it says it will be sincere. It'll be pure. And it'll be without offense. There shouldn't be any offense when you correct someone out of knowledge, and discernment because they know you're not breaking them you're actually making them you're not pushing them away you're you, opposite you're pulling them into the truth see but love must begin with knowledge then may have discernment then will approve or disapprove always with a sincerity in heart and without any offense this is the type of love that i call it as good kind of love. Why? Because this is the God kind of love. And God is good. So think about this type of love because it's good. God bless you.